I have a student uh, whose name is Shloka. And so Shloka got a score of 770 just a few days ago, I think on the 28th of March. And uh, she's here with us. Hi, first of all, absolutely awesome to see a 770 and that too in 50 days, right? You just took yes, 50 sir. days. Of yes. And you, are you applying to Deferred MBA programs? Is that why the hurry no. was? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So just take us through, you know, what worked for you, what were your weaker areas and yeah. how the exam experience was, were you, were, were you like a little nervous, was there anything unusual, just the usual uh, questions that I ask of all people, yes, please. Right. So firstly, thank you uh, for inviting me here. So uh, basically, I, I joined talk uh, on uh, almost first web, so I had around 50 days, uh, my target was uh, to apply to the deferred MBA programs. And so I was definitely in a bit of hurry. I had to complete uh, my GMAT by the end of March. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I had attended a boot camp by top actually. And that's when I decided to join this. And my main focus was on the verbal part. I think I was a bit confident with, with quant. And um, yeah, I was struggling a lot with verbal, especially RC and SP. CR was still okay. And uh, I think uh, I completely followed just the top material. I did not deviate at all from the plan that has been provided, the study plan. So just followed that completely right from the start till the end. And uh, yeah, I think it has been very helpful. Um, I did not need any other material apart from that of top. And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, I could see a major uh, change in the speed also, as well as the accuracy. So I think I started at around... 50% or even less than that accuracy in uh, RC as well as SC. And by the end of the uh, prep, I reached an accuracy of around 95%. And it all sort of happened very unconsciously. I did not have to put any uh, like significant efforts as to check my accuracy again and again. It just happened uh, very sort of organically. The way you imbibe the concepts, I think it's about imbibing the concepts correctly and that uh, that once you get that very, very clearly in your head that this is how it, it really works and it is approached, I guess automatically, gradually you would have seen a very consistent improvement then. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, initially when the accuracy started going up, I was also a bit confused, like, is it happening just out of luck? But then, because I was not actually consciously putting in those... Uh, you know, the octave or any of the rules, I was not consciously applying that. It sort of happened very subconsciously. So what I realized is that once I had grasped the concepts very clearly, I didn't even have to put in special efforts to apply those. It was happening very naturally to me. So, uh, yeah, and the accuracy stayed consistently good, like over 90% for all the practice questions that I was solving. So I was, uh, yeah, I could see that difference. All right. And uh, what all materials did you not study? Let's say there are, because you must have had a shortage of time. So some amount of practice that you left or some you did, let's say in RC, in CR, in SC, what all practice did you actually do that, apart from the main concept material? Let me just see. Uh, so I did all those 700 to 800 level questions. Uh, yeah. I uh, Initially for the quant part, I had to skip out on the quant basics. Uh, so right, I did okay. not watch that. And apart from that, uh, again, whatever uh, things that I skipped were mainly from quant only, like the DS436 questions, I, I decided I was not able to complete that entirely. But uh, I think for RC so and MBA, I completed that. Yeah. Anyway, so. But you yeah. did some of the 700 to 800 drills in quant also, that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For quant, uh, 700 to 800, I had done all. I just skipped the basics and the DS436, yeah. Right, right. And uh, how was the exam experience? I mean, was everything usual and whatever you had done or was there anything unusual? Which sections you took first? And uh, just generally take me through the exam experience of yours. Yeah. So I started with verbal, then uh, it was quant and uh, then IR and EWA. So um, right. uh, actually the exam was a bit of a surprise for me. What happened was that uh, till then, whatever mocks that I've given, my quant was uh, like pretty good. I used to get a Q51 most of the time, but uh, uh, during the examination, uh, because of the exam pressure, I got a bit slow in the uh, initial time of quant. And because of that, I was in fact not able to complete the last question. So my last question left, was left unanswered. And because of that, I got a Q50. But, uh, and that was very oh. surprising because for me, verbal was the weaker part and quant was very strong for me. 
and but i covered it up in vogel so in vogel i think i got a uh, 47 and uh, yeah, yeah. that was i think very new for me yeah vogel 47 must have been extremely good as a feeling right overall yeah, i mean that, that like yeah. from where you started you saying 50% accuracy in two of the areas so yes. a couple of more things any unusual question or question type that you saw that through you of in quant verbal anything uh i think uh, there was one question uh, in quant that i felt was a bit unusual so it was more uh, it was based on graphs so uh, i hadn't seen many of those question types in the uh, uh, 700 to 800 level questions that i had solved and so i was a bit uh, confused on how it's covered in the yeah. coordinate geometry video probably that you would have skipped so, but it is covered in detail in there okay, so right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Perhaps, yeah. no problem but apart from that nothing in verbal or in quant right nothing nothing, really. nothing as such yeah yeah and in fact i like to share one thing uh, like uh, yeah. again in verbal also uh, by the end of it uh, again because of the exam pressure i felt that my speed had gotten substantially uh, slowed down as compared to what i used to do in the mocks so in the verbal also at the end i was feeling a bit of time crunch and i approximately had just 1.5 minutes per question uh, over the last 6 to 7 questions and uh, at that time also i had a uh, i had an rc passage with uh, consisting of four questions it was a uh, it was a decently difficult passage but i was able to uh, using octave mainly i was able to go through uh, just the important points like i did not have the time to entirely read the passage because Uh, uh, otherwise, right. I would have uh, left the question. So I was able to just look for the contradictory words and find the opinions, and through that, I solved all the four questions correctly. So I think that was a great, uh, like I could see the actual impact of the concept that I learned. Yeah, that's really, really nice. No, so one more thing, everyone listening in. that because she couldn't do the kind of practice that is required obviously for maybe 20 30 more days that is why this fatigue factor that you know your speed is varying on the exam and you know, towards and you do tend to slow down you're saying happened in both sections to some extent so just one thing as an antidote to this practice those of you who have more time because she was anyway crunch for time her score is still 770 so that is not what i'm hinting at all i'm saying is one has to really see this thing very clearly that uh, whatever you're doing towards the end longer sittings of practice you'll really need to do maybe she couldn't do those so and which schools are on your horizon right now what where are you applying so i'm targeting the m7 right now uh, mainly what in stanford and uh, uh, booth what in stanford booth will be your yeah. three, top three choices yeah. all right uh, anything that you feel people should not do while preparing that you did and worked out for you and some people don't do and anything people should definitely do while preparing so a couple of things if you could point out because having had the score recently you'll be in a better position to guide let me know please okay. so i think one thing that uh, should definitely be done is attempting uh, questions of higher difficulty so initially what i felt was uh, when i started solving the 700 to 800 level questions i was not getting a very good accuracy and that is sometimes sort of demotivating because you feel that you're not able to cope up but uh, at the end it is very important to do those questions because that's the kind of score you're actually targeting and you are going to get those kind of questions exam day So even if you are not getting a very good accuracy, uh, you should not give up on those kind of questions. In fact, that should be the main target. And right. with regards to what should be done, I think uh, maybe more of a time to practice, which uh, as Sir pointed out, I could not do much over the last few days. But yeah, uh, just yeah, timing. Even the practice questions that you're uh, doing, so as Sir uh, uh, says for the RC passages, like what is the ideal time, what is the maximum limit. and also for uh, following that exit strategy like after 2.5 minutes if you are not able to solve just mark and move to the next question no matter what because if it's not been solved within 2 2.5 minutes it's definitely not going to be solved further also i think that is one thing that i missed out on in one quant question because of which i had that time crunch so yeah uh, these are the things you can keep in mind right and uh, do keep us posted with the results and the application process if you need any help during that phase also let me know and okay. we'll see and uh, yes there are some questions people are asking let me just see the questions in the chat window how do we revise after all the classes are over how many mocks did you attempt so if you could answer these two how many mocks did you yeah. attempt okay. uh so for mocks uh, again i did not have that much of a time after completing the syllabus so i just did the 
two uh, free mocks that we get uh, once we register for Gmat, and also I did I think again a couple of mocks on the top portal. So yeah, okay. these four, not much. Yeah. And uh, okay, so uh, some people are asking demanding job. No, she's still in college, so she did not have that. Uh, how many hours did you study every day? This you can answer, I think. Yeah. So uh, it was approximately six to eight hours uh, per day. Okay, and you were able to manage that with college, definitely. Yeah, I mean, because you're very yeah. focused, you had yeah, to do like this. I had to uh, like cut down on other activities, definitely. But yeah, because I had a target set in mind to uh, apply for effort, so I had to. Yeah. And when you attended the let's say boot camp in uh, Delhi, I'm guessing that is the one that yeah. you attended. What gaps did you feel that maybe you were preparing even before that? You were kind of considering what was the shocker? What were the gaps for you that this is not the way I perceived my preparation? What were those pointers, if you could tell me? I think it was mainly for verbal itself. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, in verbal, what I felt was uh, before that, I just started uh, doing a bit of the OG questions and all. Uh, on my own but uh, I was relying more on intuition I think like what sounds correct to me but uh, even for RC uh, initially my opinion was that uh, RC would be easy for me because uh, I think I was okay with English I could understand passages mostly and so I'll be able to answer them correctly but that was not the case so I was very shocked at that and attending the boot camp even during the boot camp I felt that I was able to see the problems with the strategy that I was following previously. And that's when I thought that uh, joining this would be very much beneficial to me. Uh, yeah. Right, right. All right. So thanks a lot, Luca, for your time today. And I'll I'll answer all the other questions, which is I can yeah. personally answer those uh, okay. for people. Thank you and all the very best. Do keep in touch. And it was a short but very, very profitable, fruitful journey for you. So yeah. nice to see. You. Right. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.